Hello, my name is Ken Carter. I'm a stunt driver. I jump cars for a living, and people like to see me do it. I've signed a contract with Cayuga International Speedway for my next jump to take place on Sunday, August the 29th, 1982, at Nell's Corners, Ontario, Canada. The jump will be my personal challenge to set a world record for car jumping. The contract calls for me to jump a rocket car for a distance of not less than 124 feet. My artist, my engineers, and I have decided that this production would be to try to jump a replica of Caesar Palace Water Fountain filled with alligators, crocodiles, pythons, and rattlesnakes as seen here in this concept. In our production meetings, we decided to unveil the car at the sponsor's location on August the 10th. Seven days later, on August the 17th, we will have a full, complete dress rehearsal right here at the jump site. Then we will get a chance to fire the rocket car and set up the jump in its entirety. Plus, we'll get a chance to choose the best camera locations. In choosing a location for a production of this magnitude, there are a lot of things that come into the picture. For instance, this is a heavily populated area near the border of Canada and the United States. The people who are sponsoring the rocket car, the engineers, the Carter Group, all live close to the jump site. Also, the special equipment needed to service the rocket car, such as a special lift truck to lift the, the car up onto the elevated launch pad after it's once loaded with rocket fuel, a very critical moment. Larry Flickinger and his crew are the men who service the rocket car, which means handle, handle the rocket fuel, the, the uh, pressurizing of the car. They also live very close to here. Plus, my last try to set a world record was at Buffalo, New York, just 60 miles from here. In that jump, I attempted to jump a two-story house with a rocket car. I made it over the house, but unfortunately, the car landed on its side and then flipped over on its top. It, was, it wasn't a record. But the best reason for this location is that it's close to home. Sure, it's nice to set a world record, but getting an opportunity to do it here is something else. Sitting here in the main grandstand, as we look across the infield at the back straightaway, it is difficult to visualize the jump area right in front. In a moment, we'll go down for a better look. Right here in this area is the fueling station area. This is where all of the activity is going to take place. This is where the vehicle will be fueled. It'll be prepped and the fi finishing touches is put on the rocket car. Just before the people who will take the car over and lift it up onto the launch pad, once they take the car over, they gotta be very careful because once the rocket car is loaded with fuel, it is very, very dangerous. Right in this area here is the beginning of the fueling station. Now the fueling station is 20 feet long. It ends right about here. There's a 15-foot space right in this area, and this, of course, will be the space in between the fueling station and the beginning of the launch pad. The launch pad is five feet tall, off the ground, right here. It's 16 feet wide, and of course, in 16 feet, I can't afford to make any mistakes. Once that rocket motor is fired, there is no turning back, because my ramp, as you'll see in a moment, sits at the very end. Right in this area here, is where the Superman tow truck, the special vehicle that will load the rocket car onto the la elevated launch pad, will let the car down very level and very easy. We come down past that area, we're getting about halfway into the jump into the launch pad right here as we walk across the infield. Back in that area, of course, all the activity will take place as far as people, and, and of course, we expect a super crowd for this one. This area is about the last, the beginning of the takeoff ramp. You'll see a yellow ramp sitting here right in the middle of the launch pad. As I said, it's 235 feet long. And of course, right in this area, here is the end. That's the end of the takeoff ramp. This starts the, the fountains where to hold the alligators, the crocodiles, and the rattlesnakes. Of course, back beyond the fountain will be four big trees. Each one of those trees will contain a python snake. We're coming up to the end of the takeoff ramp right here. This is the end of the fountain, pardon me, right in here. And this area, right in here, is, I hope, where the car will touch down. Now, this is a very tough, touchy situation because once you get down in this situation here and the car begins to level out, here we are in the area of the landing ramp, which is the criti critical moment. Right here, if we can get the car to this point, we might have a world record. 
you look back across there, right down through there, you're looking at 435 feet. That's a long way. This used to be a standard uh, Pontiac Firebird, but it's been converted for the purposes of uh, Ken Carter's jump. We put a roll cage in over at Northern Performance to give them a safety factor. And in addition, we had to give them, get them up to 120 miles an hour in four seconds, so we've added a rocket system. The rocket system is a hydrogen peroxide monopropellant with a, a blowdown uh, fuel system. And here's how it works. First, you fill these four tanks with uh, compressed nitrogen gas up to 2,000 pounds per square inch. The high pressure nitrogen goes from this side of the system to this side of the system. It follows back to the, to the uh, rear of the manifold, follows this hose on into the fuel tank. The fuel tank is uh, filled with 90% hydrogen peroxide, which is a rocket monopropellant fuel. And this means it has the oxygen in it and it just decomposes in the rocket chamber to produce power. We put 10 gallons of fuel in here, and as I said, it burns out in about four seconds. The fuel comes out this large uh, pipe, goes through a valve in the front of the rocket motor, and this little 56-pound rocket is all made out of stainless steel and has a catalyst in here, just like in your car's exhaust system. Only in this case, the idea is to break down the hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen, and then it produces a lot of heat which uh, gives you steam and accelerates the gases out the back. The result is uh, 3,500 pounds of thrust to give this car uh, quite a kick in the gas. It still has the original uh, engine in it, which will be used to drive the car around after the jump is completed. And, uh, but it, it doesn't have enough horsepower to get it up to 120 miles an hour quite that fast. I'd like to welcome those of the media that are here and all the other guests that have arrived today, it's a pleasure to see so many people turn out. Um, as you know, we're, we're sponsoring the car for Ken to make his attempt at a world record jump on August the 29th. The car itself which we'll unveil shortly, is a 1974 Pontiac Firebird. And when you hear the engine rumble, you'd think it'd have enough power to take off by itself over this ramp. But Bob has installed a, uh, a rocket engine in it, which takes it from 200 horsepower roughly to 2,000 horsepower. So it's, it's modified considerably and becomes quite a machine. I think I'd just like to cover for you the itinerary for the car. Uh, we'll be unveiling it here today and following that it will go up for seven days on this large crane out front. Then on Tuesday, August the 24th, the car will leave here and go to Cayuga where Ken will be doing some fast runs, he calls them. I don't know what they are exactly. Uh, between 12 and 2 p.m., anybody that's interested could go out there on the 24th and watch that. Then, of course, on, the, on Sunday, August the 29th, uh, Ken will make the, the jump attempt, and hopefully uh, make a world record with it. Following that, the car will come back here, regardless of its condition, and will stay here for four days for any of the public that would like to see it following the jump. The car is equipped stock. The rules are simple in car jumping. The car must run at least back to the starting position in order for it to be a world record under its own power. That means stock, showroom stock. It's got a 400 in it, it's got a four barrel carburetor on it, and it's an automatic transmission. We will take this car out there on the 24th and give it two hard shots down the front straightaway. 
Well, I'll stick that car in neutral, and you people will give me a countdown on the 24th, and we'll give you two runs. And in 150 feet, the vehicle will be traveling in a second and a half, 150 mile an hour. That's pretty quick for a stock car. Now, after that's all done on the 24th, we will return on the 29th, whereupon we will attempt to jump a replica of Caesar Palace water fountain filled with reptiles, alligators, crocodiles, pythons, and rattlesnakes. My existing record is 124 feet. I set it in Tampa, Florida in the company of ABC Wide World of Sports along with Frank Gifford and Evil Knievel doing the color commentating. I've done a lot of jumps in my lifetime, 601 to be exact. I did a show down in uh, Lancaster National Speedway back in June, on June 30th. It was covered pretty much all over the world. But I'm home now, guys and I'm here to stay, we're gonna make some records here. That rocket car has every chance to set at least a world record. Better than 124, possibly 150, and it could very well be 200, mile, 200 feet. The launch pad is 16 feet wide. My ramp will be sitting at the end, approximately at the 200 foot mark. When I fire that rocket motor, the car itself will be in neutral. When I fire the rocket motor, she will go down the 200 feet, up the ramp, over the fountain, and hopefully land on its wheels so we can drive it home. I want to tell you about the help that I need in the grandstand. When you people count down to zero, I'll hit it. There is no backing out once the motor fires. I can't turn off to the right. I can't turn off to the left. It's five feet off the ground already. I've got to go with it. So that's the challenge that I've put before myself. I've accepted it, and I'm ready to go. Thank you very much. Thank you. There it is. There it is. assignment is to look after the car, put it in position for me to get into it and drive it. So once Larry's finished with it, it's their responsibility to pick it up. It'll be loaded. I mean, you know, they dropped it. It's Katie by the door. <laughs> so they got to pick it up, put it on on the launch pad, and then they can then they roll it back to the position. Yeah, just have four guys, the same guys that are holding the rope. What's your uniform? What have you got for alignment, Mark? Well, we'll do that. That's what we're doing today. See, I'm just trying to get the benefit of, of what we've got here. You know, we've got the power right there. We've got the power over there. Just where it's sitting right now. Can you imagine that truck out of the way, Superman right in there, picking it up to it comes to, to, to rocket car fueling station, disappears in the yellow of the car. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's your power. And now you've got rocket car sitting on the launch pad, rolled back into start position by these people. Now, that to me, when that thing kicks off, your cameras will pick up everything in the area, including Flickinger's car, the rocket car, on the launch pad, Superman, and away she goes. Yeah. My last attempt at the world record was uh, uh, jumping over the house, two-story house, at Lancaster National Speedway, June 30th, a couple months ago. And the car made it over the house, but it landed on its side and broke therefore wasn't able to drive back to the starting position. It went 159 feet. <laughs> now that's Larry Flickinger. Larry Flickinger's car. He's, um, that car was also uh, the motor designed by Richard Keller, Dick Keller, my engineer. And I don't jump unless I have uh, an engineer standing by and he has uh, NASA experience and, and with rocket fuel. And he drives his rocket car 
on the drag strips around the country and holds many, many records. Get an opportunity to talk, talk to him. He's a super guy. He, he'll, he will be prepping, prepping the car for right. What's his name? today. Larry Flickinger. What, what kind of fuel is he using? That's the same thing we're using today, hydrogen peroxide, 90 percent Mixed with nitrogen under uh, 650 pounds PSI, we'll move that car no less than 300 miles an hour in 100 feet. Uh, you'd be traveling 300 miles an hour in 700 feet. Miles a gallon. Well, it's not economy-wise that we recommend it because it'll burn up about 52 gallons in a, in a mile. <laughs> Carter's rocket car being moved into its final position prior to launch. The car has been given its last minute checks for fuel. Car in position. Ken Carter in the orange fire suit. Ready to climb into that car. Larry Flushingham, the rocket fuel expert on the Carter team. We'll give the last words of advice and uh, double check everything one more time. And then, ladies and gentlemen, you are about to see a world record attempt with a rocket car, 160 feet in the air, ramp to ramp, and keep the car together to drive it around the racetrack and bring it back to the start-finish line. That car must make it the full five-eighths of the mile and back to the start-finish line in order to be a world's record. If Ken Carter does this, he goes down in the world record books, the longest rocket jump ramp to ramp ever performed. The car in position on the end of the launching ramp. Ken Carter at the wheel. You can see the vapors coming off the back of the car as the rocket fuel is fed into the premix. That car is just about ready to go. In a moment or two, Ken Carter will be giving the signal for the countdown to Bob Slack. Then it will come to me and we'll count it down from 10. The car in final stages of preparation. Ladies and gentlemen, from 10, let's do the countdown to get Ken Carter on a successful launch. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. Into the launching ramp, up into the air, 85 miles an hour, onto the ramp, down, he's clear. Can he keep it running? Can he keep the car running around the racetrack? He cuts in the 400 cube engine, and let's see if it will keep going all the way around the racetrack.
Ken Carter made the jump successfully, and you've seen it right here at Cayuga International Speedway. The car very slowly going around through turn two. Almost stopped, let's see what the problem is. Carter waving for a, looked like he was waving for a push there. It definitely threw the jump in the air. A beautiful landing came to a halt on the back chute. They're going to push start the car. The door is kind of jammed up a little out of there. But Ken Carter managed to get the car around in one piece. But we haul him out of the race car, out of the, the Ken Carter rocket car. Let's get his helmet off there. We get, get the helmet off so he can really hear us. And get him unbuckled down there. All right, his helmet's off. He can hear you. Let's really give it to him. Ken Carter. The longest ramp-to-ramp -ramp jump ever done by a rocket car, and you've seen it right here at Cayuga International Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, you were a witness to a world record. Now, let me tell you what happened. The car was running until it got out of the turn, and I tell you truthfully, it ran out of gas. It ran out of gas in the turn. I asked for a push, but the car did run. I got him to give me a push rather than bring, turn it around where it was. We're going to make a measure. We've got a world record here. All we have to do is measure it, Bob. Please measure it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Did you enjoy that jump? All right. <laughs> the next is the airplane. We're going to jump an airplane next. You'll be hearing about it. Oh, what a, what a, thanks, Eddie. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Jim Bullerton. Billy Balloon, thank you. <laughs> Bob Slack, thank you for everything. We'll, we'll hang loose, you'll hear it in the press, but we got a record, we're just... Wayne, Conroy, thank you. Thank you for everything. All right, we're 120 to here, plus 40 on the ramp is 160. 126. 126. 126. 186. 186. 186. That's a world record. Right? Yeah. 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 I've just completed a world record car jump. And I feel good about that. My next jump, an airplane, or possibly a blimp. We're working on that right now. The culmination of my career, a mile in a rocket car from Morrisburg, Ontario, Canada, to somewhere near Ogden Island, New York. See you there.